For many, when we think of physicians, we think of MDs, medical doctors. Uh, conventional or what's called all allopathic medical care generally means diagnosing and treating symptoms and diseases with medications and other external interventions. However, there's another variety of licensed practicing physician that doesn't always get as much airplay as it were, uh, and that's osteopathic physicians or DOs. So today I wanna to talk about the process of applying to a DO program. First, hi, my name is Dr. Sarah Klebe and I'm an admissions expert at BMO. So uh, just a little bit about this uh, kind of medical practice first. Um, DOs are fully licensed physicians that get complete medical students with their, sorry, medical schooling uh, with the same rigors of those who go through an MD program. So they're not alternative medical practitioners and the medical practice that they run often looks quite similar to what we associate with an MD. Um, the biggest difference is the approach to medicine and to the body. Um, so there is less of an emphasis on external treatment, though there is still an emphasis on that, and more sort of an approach to wellness that differs from the MD. So DOs absolutely can prescribe medicine, perform surgery, pursue specializations, and all of those sorts of things, but they tend to focus a bit more on preventative care, um, take really special care not to overuse medicinal treatments, and consider the body as a systemic unit uh, with the capacity to heal itself in many ways. Not always, of course, uh, but many ways. There are certain tenets to uh, osteopathic medicine, according to the Ameri American Osteopathic Association. These are as follows. Uh, number one, that the body is a unit uh, and the person is a unit of mind, body, and spirit. Number two, the body is capable of self-regulation, self-healing, and health maintenance. Uh, number three, structure and function are reciprocally interrelated. And number four, rational treatment is based upon an understanding of the basic principles of body unity, self-regulation, and the interrelationship of structure and function. So a lot of attention is paid to not just the patient themselves, but the world of the patient. What kinds of uh, systemic, and also environmental factors impact health and wellness, and how can health and wellness be advocated for prior to the development of a disease, an illness, a condition. So again, DOs absolutely do treat um, diseases, illnesses, and conditions, and sometimes in very similar ways to MD, but that approach is quite different. And the reason I'm focusing on this is because that's a key aspect of the application process. You need to bear this in mind if you think this is a route you may want to go down. So, um, Unlike uh, many of the MD programs in the US in particular, you don't apply for a DO program through AMCAS, rather you apply through the American Association of Colleges of Osteopathic Medicine Application Service, the AACOMAS. Um, the admissions requirements include the same things as, as other more traditional medical schools, GPA, standardized test scores, and those soft skills that are generally sought in allopathic programs. Um, and the medical school prerequisites that you have to take are generally comparable to allopathic programs, and some schools will incorporate uh, CASPER, the CASPER test, uh, as part of their review process. But while GPA and standardized test scores are undeniably important, DO programs also put a lot of weight on the sort of non-numerical aspects of each application. So including things like community involvement, your motivations for studying medicine, particularly osteopathic approaches, uh, and your letters of recommendation. Um, this isn't just a mode of practice, it's a philosophical principle, this approach of osteopathic medicine. And so it's really critical that you're able to demonstrate that you're a good fit for those kinds of programs on both academic and personal levels. So the application process, although it doesn't take place through AMCAS, but through a different service, uh, it still asks for a lot of the same kinds of things. You have to send transcripts and standardized test scores, uh, MCAT, uh, as you would for an allopathic program. And, and again, you might have to do CASPER or a similar situational judgment test, though this re uh, requirement varies by school. Uh, you also have to have reference letters. Uh, 
and these have to be submitted directly through the evaluators. The online application system has its own portal for submission of letters of recommendations. Uh, so you'll need to look through that and become familiar with their letters by liaison uh, program to make sure that your referees know where to send their letters of recommendation. And a quick note on these letters. Again, as I just mentioned, these DO programs put significant weight on the non-numerical aspects of your application. Um, and that includes these letters of recommendation. So you need to ensure that you start building strong relationships early in your academic career so that you're able to secure referees who are not able to speak highly of you, although that is an important component, uh, but who can do so with specificity regarding those principles of osteopathic medicine. Um, we tend to think if we're on the sort of, um, if we're in the stage where we're asking for letters of recommendation instead of writing letters of recommendation for others, we generally think that a strong letter of recommendation is one that just says, hey, I know this student and they're awesome <laughs> or some more refined version of that. But actually exceptional letters of recommendation need to be able to point to specific instances and interactions that demonstrate your strongest qualities. And so the best letter writers are gonna be people who know you rather well, at least in a professional sense, uh, people with whom you've worked uh, in a number of different contexts and who know your specific reasons for pursuing osteopathy Medicine, medicine and who can speak to your qualities in relation to that. So, you know, that professor whose 200 level course that you took and really enjoyed two and a half years ago and never spoke to since, probably not going to be the best letter writer for you unless you've actually remained in contact and worked together in more significant ways since that class. Um, again, like AMCAS, you have to write a personal statement essay for the uh, DO application, um, one that demonstrates just sort of who you are, what you've done, and why you're pursuing this particular field. And again, uh, the personal statement has a strong role in any med school application, but there are specific things that you need to make sure you speak to in this particular application. I'll talk about that more in a second. Just a quick note of difference. Uh, AMCAS has, uh, I believe it's 50 300 characters for their personal statement essay, uh, you only get 4,500 characters in the uh, DO application, and that's including spaces. So that's a, a shorter amount uh, or a shorter space in which you can write about all of these qualities. Um, but the aim overall is to make sure that you can effectively uh, communicate why you are an exceptional candidate specifically for osteopathic medicine, not just why you want to be a doctor, why you want to be a DO. Right, so you need to have a general working of those principles of osteopathic medicine that I mentioned earlier, um, and you need to be able to demonstrate how these principles and the values behind them have shaped your life, your approach to the pursuit of your goal of practicing medicine. Um, you don't wanna just repeat or recite those principles back to the admissions committee. They know what those principles are. They don't need them fed back to them. They need to see how you apply them to your own life, your own experiences, and your own aspirations. Um, so really think about those principles in light of your own experiences and reflect on all of that in your application material, particularly this personal statement. This personal statement in any application is the place where you try to grab the evaluator's attention and really explain to them as if they were sitting there with you why you think you are a strong candidate and why they should continue to consider your application further. So um, if you have looked into things like the social, social determinants of health, uh, social and environmental factors of individual patient care, the ways that these impact health and things like that, all of that would be really useful to bring into one of these personal statements. Um, but do note, if you are applying for both MD and DO programs, it is not at all advisable to try to simply rehash your AMCAS personal statement, uh, cutting you know a thousand characters out and boom, you're done. Um, while there are certainly many similar values and characteristics uh, desired and successful applicants uh, for each program, the perspectives of these two types of medical care are different enough that what works for one is likely not going to work for the other. If it would, there wouldn't be two separate programs and two 
two separate applications. Um, if it were as easy as just trimming down an AMCAS statement, then you could apply probably through there and you can't. Um, so the very fact that you have to apply uh, to a DO program through this other application service should indicate the distinctiveness of these two medical perspectives and the distinctiveness of the two applications you would create for this. Um, of course, you'll still want to highlight your strengths, discuss the why behind your decision to pursue a, a career as a physician, draw your uh, reader in with uh, compelling pros and things like that, um, but really making sure that you're putting that through the lens of a DO is what's going to make for a strong personal statement. You need to always write for your audience. So write for your audience. So those are the main components of the DO application. Again, it's a really similar process, but the perspective uh, through which your uh, application is going to be read is quite different. If this sounds like an approach that is really interesting to you and something you might want to pursue, I encourage you to look into those principles of osteopathic medicine. Uh, think about how you might want to apply these in your future career as a medical professional and reflect on those. Again, um, things like numerical data are important, of course, GPA standardized test scores are always important, but the applications committee is going to put uh, quite a bit of value into the non-numerical aspects of your presentation of, of self and skills. So really focus on putting that through that lens of the DO program. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it was helpful. If so, please do go ahead, like it, share it with a friend who might benefit from it. Uh, be sure to subscribe to our channel on YouTube so you don't miss out on great videos like this. Follow us on Facebook and look for us on a variety of other social media platforms. If you'd like us to help you, click the link that should appear either above or below this video and go to bmomedapplication.com to check out our programs and schedule a free initial consultation. We'll set you up with one of our admissions experts to answer any questions you might have get you started on your preparations. We have programs to suit any of your needs, and we are always happy to work with you to determine which plan will su uh, support you and your goals most effectively. As ever, thank you so very much for your time. Take good care, and I'll see you next time.